Welcome back everybody to Command Combat Battle Reports and today we are doing Axis and Allies World War I, The Great War. And it's not so great for the Central Powers right now. As we enter 1916, or thereabouts, Axis and Allies is kind of obscure on its years and timelines, the Entente is pressing forward on the Central Powers. France has been pushing on Berlin and now has an open road to it, and Italy is pushing into Austria with an open road to Vienna. These gaps have formed because the Central Powers have concentrated on taking Russia out of the war. All three of them have been pushing from different sides, but Russia has just barely been holding on enough to stay in this war, thus giving their allies time to go in at the enemy capitals. Down in Africa, meanwhile, the British and French forces have finished off the German forces and taken all of their colonies. And to make matters worse, America has come into this war and is sending over reinforcements. Let's see how this goes. We start with Austria, gaining a few new infantry and a couple new artillery. They do not attack the Italians, instead going into Trieste to hold on to their territories. And they're right next to a lot of transports, which means they might be able to attack Italy anywhere along its coast. We go to Russia, and they cannot purchase any more units because the Russian Revolution has taken hold. Yes, the Marxists have taken control of Moscow, and they are signing a peace accord with the Central Powers. That rule takes effect in this game, beginning on this turn, if the Central Powers have taken all the spaces next to Moscow, which they have, in fact they're all by Germany, so that takes Russia out of the game. All their forces are removed, and no one can move through their territory anymore. So Russia put up a good fight for a while, but now they're out of it. And that frees up all of the Central Powers forces. They just might be able to stop this tide of the Entente coming in at their capitals. This is just in time for the Germans, who buy a couple tanks, a couple infantry, some air power, and a submarine. They send forces into Hanover to defend, and they bring their navy back to defend Berlin. They're also bringing forces back from Russia. It's going to be a slow slog for them, so the Entente will have to push through before they get there. They place their forces, and we're on to the French turn. They now buy a couple tanks, a bunch of infantry, and some air power. They push forward into the Ruhr from several angles, aware that they don't have much time. They whittle down the German forces, which is good for the French, but time is not on their side right now. They bring forward forces from Picardy and take the land in Africa. They then reinforce the Italian coast and put their new forces into Paris. British gets new forces and they push forward into the Ruhr, trying to break the German will. But the Germans, having learned from Russia on how to hang on by a bare thread, is whittled down to just one infantry and one artillery. And they are holding on for the homeland. Britain says, right oh, we'll just go take Rhodesia then. And they move more of their navy into the Mediterranean and they go back for reinforcements from Canada. Some of them cross over the English Channel, and they get the reinforcements. On to the Ottomans. And seeing everybody build up their navy in the Mediterranean, they build up their navy. They bring some of their forces back from Russia, some of it going down into Mesopotamia to guard against a possible attack from India. Their navy gets placed, and we go on to Italy, who builds up a bunch of artillery. It is a mountainous region out there, and so artillery will be useful. The Italian navy makes its move on the Austrian navy. Both battleships have damaged one another. The battle continues, ending with the Italian submarine and one of their cruisers being destroyed, but the Austrian battleship and their cruiser is destroyed, leaving their transports to be destroyed as well. The Austrians no longer have a navy, and the Italian coast is safe. They also move in to reinforce Egypt from an oncoming Ottoman attack. They place their reinforcements, and it's on to the Americans. They get one tank, two infantry, and one artillery, and a bunch of transports to take it all over. They move their infantry into France, marking the first American troops to land on European soil. The other units get placed and they are ready to go over to Europe and join the fight. Everything's refreshed and we're about to enter a whole new phase. The Austrians have bought some infantry, some artillery, and some air power. It is true World War I combined arms. The artillery supports the infantry and the air power supports the artillery. Speaking of which, they move some of it into Tyrolia, knocking the Italians out of the territory. They also move in on Venice from Trieste knocking them out of that territory. The tide has truly turned. They move other reinforcements into Trieste to keep from an Italian invasion there, and they're still moving troops back from Russia. They place their reinforcements ready to join the fight, and we move on to the Germans, who get a little bit of everything. Now that is some true combined arms. Rather than sending their troops from Hanover into the Ruhr, they instead send them down into Munich to plug a further invasion. Apparently, they're confident enough to be able to hold off in the Ruhr for a little bit longer, and their other troops are slowly moving back from Russia into Silesia. 
the fight continues in the Ruhr, and the Germans are wiped out of there. The Entente is now going to be able to move further into Berlin, though the road is not entirely open. And of course, once they reach there, they're going to have to fight the reinforcements that have just been placed. On to the French, they grab some tanks, infantry, and air power, and they move to reinforce southern France. The French are now defending the south, while the British are defending the north. They're not going to make an attack this turn, instead building up their forces along the front. They also send reinforcements into the Middle East to help the British hit the Ottomans from the rear. They place the new forces in Paris, and we're on to the British. They get some air power and some more transports, and they reinforce the Ruhr. Wow, that is a lot of air power. The Red Baron is truly going to have his hands full. It makes sense with the British because they've had to spend a lot of this game relying on air power that could fly over to reinforce France rather than land units being transported by sea. And their Canadian forces are coming over. For those of you who don't know, the Canadian forces were actually really powerful in World War II. Just goes to show, politeness goes a long way even in war. The British have finished clearing Germany out of Africa and are moving their forces north. And now the British move on Persia. They're pretty close in numbers, so it's a bold attack and they managed to take out all the infantry, leaving one artillery left. They placed the reinforcements, and we're on to the Ottomans, who reinforce themselves with a tank, a couple infantry, and some artillery. And they send an invading force into Egypt, transporting some infantry and some artillery to attack the Italians and British together. And they wipe them out! The Central Powers have re-entered Africa! And they bring in more reinforcements. They continue to move more of their forces down towards Africa. Looks like that'll be their front. And they're bringing more forces down from Russia goes the Italians, and they use all of their resources to build more infantry. They bring their navy back home, so the battleship can be repaired in port, and to join forces with the French there. And they send the infantry and artillery they have to retake Venice. And they do it! The Venetian canals must be filled with blood, because that land has been fought over time and time again. But the Italians have retaken control. And now they get reinforcements in Rome, and it goes to the Americans. They build another transport, some artillery and air power, and they transport over what they have. Reinforcements are placed, and that ends this year, a year that has seen a major turnaround. It began with the Central Powers ready to be destroyed, and now it's ended with Russia out of the war, and all three countries now on the offensive. It's also become clear who's got what objectives. The Ottomans are invading south to retake Africa, the Austrians are pushing eastward to take out Italy, and the Germans are just beginning their slog fest with the French and the British, plus now the Americans, along the German-French border. This game goes until two countries of either side are taken out. The Russians having been destroyed means the Central Powers are now halfway to their goal. They only need to take out one more country to win this game. The Entente is going to do their best to stop them from doing that and take one of the countries themselves. It looks like they're trying to do that to the Ottomans by coming in through the Middle East or to the Germans with sheer numbers pushing through Europe towards Berlin. Italy, of course, could go after Austria, and they have the sea power to go after Trieste along the coast, but the Austrians have reinforced well enough that that's going to be very difficult. Plus, the Italians don't have a huge amount of resources, so don't count on them forcing their way through anytime soon. But we shall see in the next year and the next video. Come on back to watch it. Be sure to subscribe to see when that comes up, and we'll see you in the next video. Hope you're enjoying it, and happy gaming, everybody. What do you think is going to happen next? What should they do next? And what should they have done in the video that you saw? Comment your opinions below. Also support us on Patreon because beer ain't cheap. Subscribe below, thumb us and ring our bell, and find us on all our social media. See you next time!